Good morning, grade 5. Welcome back to grade 5 mathematics class. How are you all doing today? So we have come to the end of the chapter, chapter 14, data handling. So today we will discuss the questions from revision station. All of you please turn to page number 208 in your textbook. So let's see the first question. Let me read the question to you. The given pie chart shows the favorite dress of all ladies in a colony. Answer the following questions based on the pie chart. So we have learned about pie chart in our previous classes. Here you can see a pie chart that shows the favorite dress of ladies in a colony. Now let's see the first question, which is the most popular dress? So that will be indicated by the sector having the maximum size in this pie chart, right? So which is the sector having the maximum size? It is the sector that shows jeans and t-shirt, the number of ladies who likes jeans and t-shirt as their favorite dress. So from this, we can understand that the most popular dress among the ladies is jeans and t-shirt, that combination. Now let's see the next one. One fourth of the ladies like sari. Is it true or false? So let's look at the sector representing the number of ladies who like sari. This is that sector. You can see it here in your textbook. And this is one fourth of this given pie chart. So one fourth of the ladies like sari. That is a true statement. Now the third one. Which two dresses are equally popular? So that will be represented by sectors of the same size, right? So which are the sectors having the same size here? The sectors having the same size are those which represent the number of ladies who like the combination of skirt and top and churitas. So the two dresses which are equally popular are the combination of skirt and top and then churitas. Now let's see the fourth one. More ladies like sari than skirt and top. Is it true or false? So this is the sector that represents number of ladies who like skirt and top. And this is the sector that represents number of ladies who like sari. So which is bigger in size? Is it the one representing sari or the one representing skirt and top? We can see the one representing the number of ladies who like sari is bigger. So more ladies like sari than skirt and top is a true statement. Hope you are clear with this question. Now let's see the second one. The second question says, Draw a pie chart for the following data, giving the details about the early morning ring of 100 people. Here one entry is missing. There is one more entry here that says shake and it is liked by 10 people out of total 100 people. Now, out of the 100 people we have 50 out of 100 likes coffee, which means the fraction of people who like coffee is equal to 50 by 100, which when reduced to the lowest term will give you the fraction 1 by 2. Now the fraction of people who like tea as their favorite drink is equal to 25 by the total number that is 100 and which is equal to 1 fourth or 1 by 4. What about the fraction of people who like hot chocolate? That will be equal to 5 by 100 which is equal to 1 by 20. Now, the fraction of people who like milk is equal to 10 by 100. That is equal to 1 by 10. And the fraction of people who like shake as their favorite drink is also 1 by 10. That is 10 out of 100, 1 by 10. So, here 50 represents half or 1 by 2 of the pie chart and t can be represented by one fourth of the pie chart and hot chocolate can be represented by one twentieth of the pie chart and milk can be represented by one tenth and the shake also can be represented by one tenth of the pie chart. How do you draw the pie chart? First using your compass draw a circle of any radius. Now we have to represent the fraction of people who likes coffee as their favorite drink. So for that, we need to take one half or one by two of this pie. So draw a line passing through the center of the circle using your ruler and then you will be dividing the circle into two equal halves. Each part will be one half. This is one half or one by two and this is also one by two. Now here, let's represent the fraction of people who likes coffee. Now we are left with the other one half. 
Here we have to represent the fraction of people who like tea, hot chocolate, milk and shake. So the fraction of people who likes tea is equal to 1 fourth or 1 by 4. We are left with 1 half. Let's divide this 1 half into 2 equal halves. So then we'll be left with 1 fourth and 1 fourth. And in 1, 1 fourth, let, let's represent the fraction of people who likes tea. Now we are left with the other 1 fourth. So here in this 1 fourth, you have to represent the number of people who likes hot chocolate, milk and shake. And the fraction of people who likes hot chocolate as their favorite drink is equal to 1 by 20. So how do we change this 1 fourth into sectors that represent 1 by 20? See, if we divide 1 fourth into 5 equal sectors, each sector will be 1 by 20. 1 by 4 divided by 5 will be equal to 1 by 4 into 5 which is equal to 1 by 20. So let's divide this 1 fourth into 5 equal sectors. So let's draw lines connecting it, connecting these points to the center. Now each of these sector will represent 1 20th of this pie chart. Now in 1 1 by 20th let's represent the fraction of people who like hot chocolate. Now we are left with 4 1 by 20th. In this area we have to represent the fraction of people who likes milk and the fraction who likes shake. And the fraction for milk is 1 by 10. Each of these is 1 by 20. So how can we represent 1 by 10 using sectors of 1 by 20. So we know 2 1 by 20s will make 1 by 10. So let's combine 2 1 by 20 sectors to represent 1 1 by 10 sector. So let's erase one line between 2 1 by 20 sectors. So this will be 1 tenth. So let's write milk here. And in the case of shake also, you have to represent 1 by 10. So for that case, let's erase the line between 2 1 by 2 sectors. So this is also 1 by 10. And let's write the fraction of people who represent shake here. So your final pie chart will look something like this. So I hope you are clear with this question now. Let's move on to the next question. The third one. The given table shows the evening snacks popular among a group of people. Study the given table and answer the following questions. So we have learned about tally marks. It's a way of counting data in groups of five. And here you can see a tally chart. Let's go through the questions. How many people like pizza in the evening? So here we have the labels for evening snack and the tally marks. Let's count the number of people who likes pizza as their favorite evening snack. So we know each of these groups represent 5. So this is 5, this is 5, this is 5 and this is 2. So the total is 5 plus 5 plus 5, 15 plus 2 is equal to 17. So what is the number of people who like pizza in the evening is equal to 17. Now the next question, which is the least liked snack for the evening? So that will be represented by the least tally marks, right? So let's see which one is that. Here, have a look at the tally marks for dosa. There is only five lines, which represents five people. So which is the least liked snack for the evening? It is dosa. So let's write it here. Now the next one, which two snacks are equally liked? Those will be represented by the same number of tally marks. Have a look at the tally marks for burger and biscuits. Here is a total of 7 and here is here it is a total of 7 as well. They both have the same tally marks which means these two are equally liked by people. So the two snacks which are equally liked by people are burger and biscuits. Now the next question. How many more people prefer pizza than dosa? So for that we need to compare the tally marks for pizza and the tally marks for dosa. What is the tally marks for pizza? It is 17. And what is the tally marks for dosa? It is 5. 
Now, how many more people prefer pizza than dosa? How do we find it? Just take the difference. So, that is 17 minus 5 and it is equal to 12. So, 12 more people prefer pizza than dosa. Now, the next question. What is the total number of people on whom the survey is done? How do we find it? We have to take the sum of all the tally marks. So, what is the total tally marks here? So, the tally marks for pizza is 17, for samosa it is 14, for burger and biscuits 7 each and for dosa it is 5. So the total tally marks or the total number of people on whom the survey was done will be equal to 17 plus 14 plus 7 plus 7 plus 5, right? And that is equal to a total of 50. So the survey was done on 50 people in total. I hope you are clear with this. Now let's see the last question, question number 4. Monisha's mother recorded her weight as she grew from 1 month to 6 months. Draw a line graph for the given data. So we have seen what a line graph is. So to draw the line graph, first you have to get hold of a graph paper like this. Now on the x axis or on the horizontal axis, let's represent the months from month 1 to month 6. So for that, let's draw a horizontal line using the ruler. So all of you please take your ruler, place it on the graph paper like this. Then you have to draw a horizontal line representing the months. Now you can put an arrow to indicate that the line is extending. So this will be the horizontal line representing months. You can put an arrow, arrow mark here also. Now let's write the labels for representing the months. So on the first division after the origin, let's put 1, then 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Now let's draw the vertical line to represent the weight in kilograms. So take the ruler, tilt it and draw a vertical line. You may put an arrow mark to indicate that this line is extending. Now here you can write weight in kilograms and put an arrow as well. Now on the vertical line, let's write the marks for representing weight. So here let it be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and it goes like that. Now the next step to draw the line graph is to draw horizontal and vertical dotted lines based on the data given in the table. So we know from the table that on the first month, in the first month the baby weighed 4 kg. So corresponding to the first month, let's draw a vertical dotted line and then corresponding to 4 kg, let's draw a horizontal dotted line. You see this point where the two lines intersect, there you have to put a mark. Then the next one, second month the baby weighed 5 kg. So dotted line from 2 or second month, now dotted line from 5 kg. You see the point of intersection, there you put a mark. Now the third month, the third month also the baby weighed 5 kg. So from third month, you are drawing a dotted line upwards. Then from 5 kg, you have this dotted line. And at the point of intersection, you put a mark. Now the fourth month, the, the fourth month the baby weighed 6 kg. So corresponding to 4, a dotted line. Then from 6, you draw a horizontal line. And at the point of intersection, let's put a mark. Now, fifth month, the baby weighed 8 kilogram. So, from 5, you draw a dotted line vertically upwards. And from 8, you draw a horizontal line. And at the point of intersection, you put the mark. Now, sixth month, the baby weighed 9 kilograms. So, from 6, a line upwards. And from 9, a line horizontally. So 
we have the point of intersection and now that we have marked all the points the next step is to draw straight lines connecting these marks so let's draw straight lines connecting these marks you may use your ruler to connect the dots so now we are done with drawing the line graph i hope this is clear to you so children we have discussed all the questions from revision station today you may go through all the topics and all the exercise that we have done in this chapter once again and then as a homework you have to do a worksheet which is from page number 209 so once you're done with the worksheet you can take a picture and send us to teams so that's all for today children we'll see in the next class with a new chapter till then bye